Good afternoon. This is Pamela Lynn Kolthauser, reporter for the Abolition News Network, broadcasting live March 10, 1770 at the National Martyrs Mausoleum. Today we are going to talk to the first American martyr of the colonies about an event known around the world as the Boston Massacre. Please welcome Crispus Atux. Welcome, Mr. Atux. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's just start. Okay, so me. now, why don't you describe to us in detail the events that took place on March 5th, 1770 on King Street, downtown Boston? Well, it was a cold, moonlit night. There was about a foot of snow on the ground, and all of a sudden, a church bell rang out. And then, um, shortly after that, a rumor was spread that a, a barber was being abused by some British sentries and um, a, a angry crowd grew in the streets of Boston. So I grabbed my corkwood stick mm -hmm. and I went out and I said, we're, we're gonna keep the peace. I wanted to keep the peace and no one was gonna fight. Okay, well, before you go on with the story, what do you think the people of Boston, just an ordinary citizen, how did they feel about British rule or even the Boston girls dating the British soldiers? We don't like it. We don't like them dating our girls. We don't, we just don't like them, them lobster backs they they're just not, it's just horrible and now they have we're like a garrison town with the British troops having unchecked power hmm okay um, so who ended up firing the first shot that night it happened so fast it was about nine o'clock and a brick was thrown and one of the British sentries he was stepping back and he slipped on a piece of ice and when he slipped back he fired up in the air Wow so what happened next well, after that, about eight British troops um, from the 29th Regiment, they came and they fired head on um, towards the crowd. And I was hit first with two shots in the chest, and then two more were hit after that. Wow. Um, can you describe the scene on the streets afterwards? Well, I don't have to. Um, Paul Revere, he put together this um, engraving to show um, exactly what happened. And as you can see, the British troops, they were firing point blank range at us. And it was just horribly bloody. Um, Samuel Adams, he called it the bloody butchery. Wow. Oh, look what he says. Let me read this. Unhappy Boston, see thy sons deplore. Thy hollow walks be smeared with guiltless gore. While faithless Preston and his savage bands with murderous rancors stretch their bloody hands. Like fierce barbarians grinning over their prey, approve the carnage and enjoy the day. If seedling drops from rage from anguish wings, if speechless sorrows laboring for a tongue, or if a weeping world can aught appease the plain of ghosts of victims such as these. The patriots' copious tears for each are shed, a glorious tribute which embalms the dead. But know each summons to that awful goal where justice strips the murderer of his soul. Should venal courts the scandal of the land snatch the relentless villain from her hand? Keen execrations on this plate inscribed shall reach a judge who never can be bribed. Wow, that's quite a bit of poetry. Yeah. Volumes 1 through 10 on the road to the abolition of slavery. Volumes 1 and 2. Introduction on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Slavery explained in the words, writing, and songs of contemporary politicians, abolitionists, slaves, pro-slavery advocates, and others. Volume 3, Politics on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. The Institution of Slavery and How It Was Written into the U.S. Constitution. Volume 4, Heroes and Heroines on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Liberated from the shackles of slavery, countless slaves made extraordinary contributions to society. Volume 5, Obstacles on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Slavery culturally entrenched and protected by religious, political, and social obstacles. Volume 6, Martyrs on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. 
people black and white gave their lives in the fight for freedom from slavery. Volume 7, Kidnappers and Justice on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery The law protected slavery, and the scales of justice were in favor of the slave owners. Harriet Beecher Stowe, The Evil of Slavery Stowe reveals the people and the conditions that inspired her explosive novel about slavery and life in the South. Volume 8, The Legacy of What Slavery Left Behind War-ravaged people struggle to rebuild their society and come to terms with the repercussion of slavery after the Civil War. Volume 9, Those Dedicated Angels on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery Recognizing the work of 12 abolitionists whose extraordinary dedication helped to free the enslaved, these are the people who fought for a higher standard of mankind. Volume 10, Coming Soon, Summer 2013 The Beginning of Slavery Indentured Servants and the Transatlantic Slave Trade Colonial Plantations Needed Labor more orphans, loose women, convicts, and Quakers than the old world could send as indentured servants. So the colonists looked to Africa, and the transatlantic slave trade thrived for 450 years.